Uh, it's Holly Hotspurs back with another one. Chatting all things Tottenham, we're second to none. Special guests every time, if it's win, lose or draw. The passion is high, like Harry Kane when he scores. Or when Lloris makes a world class save. We got Hoybier running the mid every game. Settle down, stick around, share your thoughts with the panel. And make sure you're subscribing to the channel. Coys. Hello and welcome to another episode of Holly Hotspurs Live and West Ham get battered everywhere they go. And tonight to talk about that game that happened love, uh, yesterday, which was fantastic, I am joined by two lovely guests. Uh, Patrick will be on his way very shortly, just to let you all know. But with me from the off, we are joined by Spursy Knight, aka Ross, who is a club legend on the channel. So thank you so much for that, Ross. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic, you know, fantastic. You know, I, I was hoping for a win. I was like, I don't want to talk about a loss. So <laughs> I'm so glad we got a win and we, we got that uh, you know, three to one, you know, and West Ham get battered. West Ham get battered everywhere they go. Love it. Love it. We're all in high spirits. I love that, Ross. And also joined by Max. Max, how are you on this Monday evening too? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thanks. It's good to be back in the channel. Um, definitely after a Derby Day victory, of course. Nothing better than beating uh, beating West Ham. Literally, nothing nothing beats it, does it? No, it really doesn't. And, and like I say, luckily for you, I was there yesterday and, it, and to witness it live as well was something else. But we'll get into that um, right now, to be honest. Um, we're going to obviously talk about this win-loss, win-loss streak because that map is now banished. That is gone. Um, so that's a great thing to talk about. But... Before we get into the game, I just want to talk about kind of feelings before it started. Um, I'll start with you first, Max, because obviously you were at the game as well. It, it was pretty tense, wasn't it, in the stadium? Do you know what? It's one of those where it could have gone either way and everyone knows West Ham have just come off that Europa League victory. So that's why I was nervous. But then you can also take into account they've played 120 minutes. But mm. I think when you win after 120 minutes, you automatically, it's different to losing because obviously the adrenaline and They'd, they'd have been fully up for it yesterday. We were just so much the better team in the end. And once we got that third goal, it was just finally like we needed it. Even at 2-0, it's always a bit a bit edgy. and No one's comfortable. We've seen it before, even at 3-0 at home to them. I know there wasn't a crowd at that time or whatnot. I can't remember. No, there wasn't a crowd, was there? Or, or was there? I don't think there was. No, because that was the time then Bale, when Bale was there. Yeah. But... Yeah, the build-up to the game was pretty decent, as you know, Holly. Um, in the goal line bowl, as you know, the chance rule going, the uh, West Ham get battered. I mean, that, obviously, no one was singing that at the start because no one wanted to risk it. But the chance were in full swing. Um, I was slightly confident. I think, you know what, the front three have been doing bits recently and Kulu, he's, he's, playing, he's playing brilliantly at the moment. And we've finally found a player. I know a few games ago it was too early to judge, but we've finally found someone. He's link-up play. Is second to none. So, yeah, West Ham came, they got battered and then they went home. It was a great day. It was a great day, wasn't it? Beautiful. Um, but yeah, like you said, obviously the chance were in full flow at the start of the game. But I was nervous and I think a lot of fans were nervous. Um, and for you, Ross, as well, obviously we had the same start in 11 that's been playing week in, week out. And obviously with that hoodoo of the win-loss, win-loss, were you nervous as well about it? I wasn't too nervous. I mean, you never, you know, it's, you never know, you know, with Spurs, it's a coin toss, you know, mm -hmm. what, what are you going to get? And with the win loss, win loss, but I, I felt pretty good about it, especially after them playing 120 minutes, you know, we definitely could take advantage of that, get out, run them, get them, get them working. And, uh, and we did that. And, uh, you know, it was, it was great. I mean, just to, uh, you know, come out the way we did and kept the possession. That's what I really like. We mm -hmm. kept the possession late in the game. You know, kept kind of played keep away almost. You know, kept it moving, kept it going. You know, and uh, and you know, just said because you know, what, what can they do with the ball if they don't have it? Exactly. Mm. I know it is interesting you say that as well because obviously we had the same kind of team. Obviously, we were kind of nervous that we had this hoodoo on our back, but it was pretty much the perfect start for us, Max, wasn't it? Because obviously we see Zuma get that own goal, which I'll probably get, probably get into the south stand and everything that was going on in the south stand <laughs> with Zuma, but. Seeing us come out from the blocks, like Ross has said, we, we came out from the blocks straight from the off. Well, thing is, we've, we, we only know Tottenham to be this attack inside and get forward, create chances. So when we went through that, that, that sloppy like year or so, where we're passing around the back, we're not creating chances, a couple of different managers trying to work out what, what our place is, our style is. And now we finally look to be 
pushing again. Like top four somehow is doable. Like we're actually up there again. And you think I think how many games we've lost this season? We've lost to Wolves, lost to South, Southampton. Like they're they're obviously the closest ones at, at Spurs that we've lost. And on a normal day, if we play like that, if we can beat anyone. I don't know why we have these games where we just we just we look like no one can create anything. But we got off to a fly yesterday. Obviously, Kane and Son linking up again. Unfortunately, it weren't Son because that would have been a hat trick, obviously. But who, who else better to score an own goal than Kurt Zuma? He was getting he was getting pinged all game. He was from the stadium. He was getting he was getting flying cats around the stadium. He was anything. People, I think there was even a corner at one stage, and someone was like waving a cat in front of him. Or, <laughs> but do you know what? Anything to put them off. And uh, I'm, I'm all for it. I thought we were brilliant on the day. We we're brilliant all round. I'd have been gutted if uh, if like the way we came out and went two 0 up, I'd have been gutted if obviously we ended up drawing. It's it's always different if you're losing two 0 and then get back to it. And you're not too you're like you're like fair play. I'm happy. Like we got back in the game. We haven't lost the game, but we we kind of were putting them to bed straight away. They saw even hit the post after his one 0 yeah. didn't they? So it could have been out of sight by half time. Really, three 0 half time that would have been would have been game over. Um, obviously, two 0 comes around and. Oh, the, the South Stands is buzzing, as you know. It's just there's nothing better than being at South Stand when you're winning because it, it it was it was just rocking, wasn't it? It was, and to be fair, that's my first kind of um, experience in the South Stand, and I just, it was just amazing hearing all the chants and those cats. I don't know whether you saw it on the telly, uh, Ross, but those cats were like yeah. every time mm-hmm. I saw, I was just giggling the whole yeah. time, and, and it yeah. did put Zuma off because he obviously scored that own goal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Expressions had one on his uh, thing. He was waving around and <laughs> throwing everywhere. Oh no! It, it was just yeah. I think it was if you're there. I mean, even if you were at home, you could feel the atmosphere that was going on in that stadium. And I know we've we've just briefly talked about the own goal, but obviously moving on to Sonny's second goal, Ross. Um, look now, last week on the channel, as you know, we were obviously talking about how we think Sonny might need a rest. Um, but he managed to score two goals yesterday and it kind of shows that you can't take him off regardless if he needs that rest. So do you think we need to keep Sonny on even if he does look knackered because he does have moments of magic just like yesterday? Yeah, you, you do. You have to play Son. If you don't play Son, you're going to be in trouble with a capital T. And, uh, you know, and it's so great. I, I love this the, after that second goal, top bins, and then he, he, he heard the slander. He heard the slander. He said, that, that was for his haters, you know. It, it's so great to see that. And he is. I mean, yeah, yeah, he has rough times. He has rough patches, but don't any, doesn't any player. But somebody mm-hmm. of that quality, because that's what he can do. He mm-hmm. can come out there. He, and even if he's not, he's a threat. You know, a defense has to account for him. If he's in the box, they're going, where's son? You know, mm-hmm. you, so you, you can't drop it. Simple as that. I, I just mm-hmm. Simple as that. I think the, the thing we were talking about last week, Max, was the fact that obviously he's not making as many runs as he used to do, but it seems mm. like he doesn't necessarily have to because if we play that same ball every time, Kane to Son, it's going to get found out. But maybe that mm. might be why, do you think? Or do you think it's just because he is surely maybe a bit knackered? Uh, I don't know. I guess loads of things have come into factor with Son. He's, he's someone that... I think we've said it on the pod before, but let's say someone puts in a like, feisty tackle against him because he's such a happy character. Mm. He only knows to smile. He doesn't know. He doesn't do unhappy, does he? He's mm. he's a bit like me actually. I'm always optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always optimistic. I'm always happy. I always try to look on the bright side of things. And Son's bit Son's quite similar to that when he's on the pitch. So he's either he's either ten out of ten or he's like a zero. He's he's not. There's never an in between with Son. So if you get if you get a good Son on your day, you're getting the best of his ability. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it just shows how important it is, though, to have someone else on the other side. So if Son can't create, at least you've got someone like Kulu who can. Like it, it's not just where's Son or Kane gets the ball. Where's Son? Like Kane's trying to find Kulu. Kulu, he's not going to be doing those runs in behind. He's going to be like using his creative awareness. He's he makes space. He's he's good on the ball. He's tall. I just think he offers something completely different. Mm-hmm. Whereas Son, sometimes if you have two wingers that are exactly the same like fast over the top, it doesn't always work because you could argue it's easier to mark. If you've got players that are completely different, like like Kane, for example, will drop back. He always used to look for Son. And I think that's why Son's been drowned out re- recently. Mm-hmm. It's just saying, it's Kane gets the ball and then where's Son? Where's Son? I need to look time. for him. Mm. And don't get me wrong, when it play, when it comes off like he did yesterday, like it's, it's brilliant to see. We all love it. Um, I think Son's the, like the third Premier League goal scorer in the season. And do you think 
well, well, people have been saying he hasn't scored for like four, five, six, seven games. Like he's still he's still our main man. He's still up there. He's still scoring goals, creating chances. The second goal, I thought that was well. From where we were sat, obviously, we just see it flash from one side of the goal to the other, top corner. Um, I don't know if it did take a little niggle off, off of someone into the top corner, but either or, Keith weren't saving it. And that's when when Son's got that smile, when, when, he, when he's doing that celebration, you, you, you know. <laughs> oh, I messed that up badly there. But when, when that celebration is, is, is on your screen or whether you're watching it live, you know you're, you're getting the real deal with Son. 100%. And, and thank you, Joseph, for this super chat as well. I really appreciate it. He says, Ross, that it looks like Sonny is playing himself back to form. And like um, Max says, it's because he's smiling again, I think. I think him and Kane have found that partnership again that I think was slowly fading with all the stuff that went on in the summer and things. You can see it kind of weakened their spirit a little bit. But like Joseph says, it seems like he's playing himself back to form. Oh, yeah. He, he's back. You know, just like the club song, Can't Smile Without You, you know. Mm-hmm. There you go. I mean, it's Kane and Son, peanut butter and jelly, you know, bread and butter. The, you know, they're the duo and, and they found their form. And, you know, people, Son kind of carried us when, when Kane was just coming back and, you know, had to play the, you know, people forget he had to play the whole Euros mm-hmm. and they're, oh, you know, Son stepped up and was kind of carrying us. It took them a little time, but now they're back and, you know, most that. prolific duo of all time. 100%. Record breakers. Um, Absolutely. Well. Not that some people would say they they would say because they are record breakers. Um, and I just wanna I just wanna fizz this one out here because obviously we get onto like the middle of the game that was kind of a bit bum twitchy because it was a bit tense. But just as we're on the kind of Sonny kind of talk um, and the fact that he obviously in the 88th minute sealed the deal, Max. I think we kind of slightly touched on it. How have teams kind of not sussed out the K? Uh, as soon as Kane gets the ball, he's going to find Son. Is it just because they execute it? So well, do you think that teams haven't like copped onto it? Well, that's just it's just like saying why can't people tackle Messi when he was at Barcelona? It's when someone's that good and you can't get the ball off them. If someone's that good on the ball, if someone's got that sort of tactical awareness, it's just they're clever footballers. Kane knows that he can drop back into space and he always finds that space in the middle of the park. You think, why aren't the midfielders of the other team over there? But it's because Kane drops in, he knows where to drop in, he knows how to how to play. He knows where Son's going to be. He doesn't have to look up and try and find Son. He knows where he's going to be. It's like when I used to play football at school. I'd always know where your best mate is. You always know where your friend is. You know, like you, if they're playing, you're naturally happy as well, aren't you? Because you, you think, oh, we can have good link-up play. So I think Kane and Son, they, they'll just keep on going. It's just like Kane every season, oh, one season wonder. It's like we've been there, done that. It's, it's old. We don't hear that anymore. We don't talk about it. The Son, Son and Kane, people are going to be saying, why can't we stop them? And it's just like, you could argue, argue that's the same with Liverpool with Salah and, and Mane or Salah Jota or, you know, it's just, if, a, if two players have that sort of chemistry between them, they're naturally going to be able to find each other more, more often than not. So, while those two are playing in form, then they've, they've come into form, right, the thing for me, right at the best time of the season because it's right on the top four, like, We've actually got a better run in than Arsenal, right? They've got one game in hand over us, but you could argue that game's against us anyway. So it's all to play for. I'm, it's my optimism coming through again. <laughs> it's, I think I'll, we've got Newcastle after the international break. I was going to say, just hold your top four feelings because we will get to that. Because I know Luke the other week was very optimistic about it, and I'm sure he'll want me to talk about it again to because he'll prove me wrong. Um, and he'll get it'll be right. So um, just quickly moving away from top four and, and the running of fixtures. Um, mm-hmm. It's kind of I want to talk to you, Ross, because Darren said here, how come no one marks Kane low? And, and I think Max has covered it in the sense that he drops back. But for me. I didn't even know Declan Rice was on the pitch yesterday. Did, did you notice that as well? Like, it, it was just non-existent. Oh, yeah. And that, that's Bentaker, you know, or mm. a.k.a. Bentasauce, as I call him. I <laughs> oh, mean, yeah. that guy is, I mean, he he's phenomenal. I mean, he stepped in his first, within seconds of stepping on the pitch's debut, he was our best midfielder. I mean, he's so good. He's so good. He's just what we've been needing, you know, a progressive midfielder, somebody that can ping that ball up. And, yeah, he completely just shut Rice down. I mean, yeah, you didn't even know Rice was out there. Oh, Rice played. You know, he's not on the bench. Mm. You know, he, you know, he, it, he did it, man. It's also like he was kind of pinned in. I don't know, Max, whether that was because of, like Dylan says here, I don't know whether that's because of Kuliszewski. I think I said it right this time. It seemed to me he was all over the place. He was closing down players. He was dropping back in when he needed to. I think him as well as Ben Tenker, like Ross said, they were putting a shift in yesterday. Yeah, Kulu's definitely looking to got a, he's got a big defensive side to his game as well. 
Um, but Benton Cool, yeah, I, I, I don't know what Conte said to him, but he's he, we, like you said, the two players you just mentioned, they're the two signings of Conte. Like they, that's two players that he, what we know that he wanted from Juventus. So two players he knows where the team's needed it. We've needed a solid midfielder like that. We've always had someone that can put a foot in, and Hoiberg's been doing that, but. After that, he doesn't know what to do with it. He's done he's done a couple of nice passes like recently. You're always gonna you're always gonna find someone if you're picking the ball 30 times a game. But Benton Court, he just looks so relaxed. He's so calm on the ball. There's a little clip where he's actually facing towards Larice, and he probably thinks I ain't passing to Larice because I know what he's like with his footwork. And he has got two West Ham players around. I'm not sure who it is, but he actually just turns them inside out. And the way he does it is just. It's mad. It's just, it, and it's so nice to watch. And it's so like, I don't actually feel when he's on the ball. It's a bit like Romero, actually. Mm. Try and oh, compare yeah. Romero on the ball to to Sanchez. So when Sanchez has the ball, yeah, you feel like, oh, get rid of it, get, get rid of it, get rid of it. As with Romero, you yeah. feel like calm. You're like, oh, like he's going to pick a pass. And that's exactly what Ben Tancur offers. And it just helps he has that that attacking mind as well. He's got a bit of both, isn't he? He's a bit of a box-to-box midfielder. Um, what was the through ball in our last game where Benton Kerr played it uh, through to Kane? Oh, it was... Um, what was the away game? Brighton. That He played through Kane for that one. And we got we got much more to see of this, honestly. <laughs> it's, it's exciting times. It is very when, exciting. Uh, oh, go on, Ross. Go on. When, uh, yeah, when uh, Benton Kerr left those two defenders like that, in American football, we call that sending them to the Gatorade. <laughs> so that <laughs> was so great. I go, I'm learning NFL lingo as well. We speak, I'm doing my own Thank you. Um, <laughs> before we move away from Benton Court, obviously, we've spoken about Hoiberg, and Hoiberg for me, I think yesterday as well, slowed the Dane down slightly. I mean, he wasn't as noticeable because we were playing so well, but he seems to get the ball. It's a bit like Harry Winks, he'll decide to turn backwards or take too many touches, and then by then, we've lost momentum. So, Ross, I'm going to throw this one to you. Dylan's kind of said it. We need Oliver Skip. Now, how are you feeling once we get that combination of Ben Tenker and Oliver Skip? See, that, that's an interesting thing because uh, Hoybier and Ben Tenker have actually turned out to be a pretty good partnership so far. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think they've really grown together and come together well. I would like to see Skip in there with Ben Tenker. That would be interesting. You know, maybe we could go with a three midfielder, maybe a, maybe a uh, three five two or something, try something similar to that. With Skip, if we can work him in there. But I think right now, I think Benton Kerr and Hoybier are really meshed together pretty well these past few games. I mean, yeah, to be fair to you, like it's not as if, obviously, we've got that win against Brighton, we've got that win against yeah. West Ham. Mm-hmm. It did seem pretty solid. I just, It's an interesting point, because like you said, we've we've said for so long we need consistency in the team. We mm-hmm. get consistency while we wait for Oliver Skip to get better. I, I did, didn't know whether Oliver Skip would be the better move, but I suppose you don't know yet until Oliver Skip yeah. comes back into the side sort of thing. It is a really interesting take. I mean, Max, I feel I've had your take on this before. What's your your kind of thoughts? Do you think you keep with consistency on Hoiberg or as soon as Skip is, is ready, fizzing in? Mm, I think you've got to keep it for now just because mm-hmm. they've found that balance. They're, ben Tanker is obviously still new to the Premier League, so he's probably, bearing in mind, Hoiberg is experienced in the Prem, so you, he's just got like a novice with him. And if he, he's learning everything. They're learning together. They're, like They've never played together, so... Obviously, as much as we want to skip back, we're actually finding our form now. We're finding results, so you, you don't change. You don't change something that's winning. It's like mm-hmm. uh, you could even argue. You remember when when Kane when Kane was injured and Son was playing? Everyone was like, "When?" Because it's Kane, he naturally forces his way back in anyway because it's Harry Kane. But a lot of people were like, "Don't rush him back. You don't need mm-hmm. to rush someone like back." When you if you're winning games, you just it's 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 just a benefit of having that player on the bench then. It's just like an impact sub, and yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. Um, could you say you, we're missing Skip at the moment? It's, it's a lovely option to have to come back. Don't get me wrong, but let's say we didn't have Skip coming back, would you be saying, "Oh, I want someone else to come in at the moment"? Like you probably wouldn't. Yeah, that's because a good we've been, point. Because it's, it's just that's what I mean. It's all about having the like squad rotation. So, I mean, I wish we could have a bench, for example, that's that's like Chelsea's. They've got like superstars sitting everywhere. They they can bring fifty million pound players off of the bench at the moment. So <laughs> not for very much longer. But... No, <laughs> <laughs> not, not for much longer. Hopefully, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see about that. But no, it is interesting. Like you say, like I, I never really cut. Kind of, I'm bang on about consistency all the time, but it's true. Why change a system that's kind of working at the moment? I just felt if 
West Ham were a bit more on the ball. Because it was strange that they weren't necessarily, they didn't really seem up for it. I know they had their win in the week, but it's a, it's a derby. They didn't really seem to get out of the blocks. Um, but again, I think, like somebody said up here, it's because Rice didn't really have an option um, to obviously play the ball. I think someone said it up there. And is the mm. man, oh, here he is. Hey. There he is. Uh, sorry, people. <laughs> Apologies. I'm sorry I'm late. I was on um, the Football Terrace um, podcast and I just couldn't get off, so I apologize. <laughs> That's right, Shut up, bro. Right? Yeah. Um, we've kind of we were just talking about obviously uh, the, the goals and things that happened, and mm. obviously uh, Kulaveski and things. Um, I kind of get your kind of overall take, so you can kind of like get up yeah. to speed with kind of what we spoke about. So, 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 so you're talking about what the game that just went, Kulaveski, how he slotted in, and and the goals were scoring, and what I think. Yeah, about just it kind or... of like your overall, because we've kind of spoken about the goals already. So just yeah. your kind of. Overall thoughts, and then I'll come to you about a specific point. Uh, I think Kudelski amazing. I mean, the way he slotted in is effortless. And um, when he first came in, I was always I wasn't one of these guys that was writing him off after his first two substitute stints. People were saying, "Ah, oh, he looks rubbish. He looks leggy. He looks." I was like, "Give him some time." But as soon as he started, you see how good he is. He hasn't got no standout attributes in the sense of he's not lightning quick or you know he's not someone that straight away is easy on the eye, but. He's, he's he's fast with the ball at his feet. He's very strong. It's hard to get the ball off. And I think he's technically gifted. He can go either way. He can shoot. He can pass. I mean, he's slotted in fantastically. And he actually gives us a real third option. We've always had a front two with Sane and, uh, yeah, Son and Kane. But with Kudacheski now, teams have a lot more to worry about. And, um, you know, he's linked up with Kane fantastically. And he just gives us an extra element or an extra output. So, yeah, I'm so happy with him, man. I think he's a fantastic player. He's only 21 as well. So, obviously, he's got My. a high ceiling. You can't, I can't believe when I look at him, I'm like, are you sure you're not 27 <laughs> or 28? You must he's be a, a ringer, man. He's I need to seven check that years younger than me. <laughs> seven years younger than me. How? He's a, he's a oh, beast. Wow. He's, yeah, no, nah, he's, 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 he's brilliant, man. I mean, if those are Juventus rejects, boy, I'll take them all day long, man. Like, oh. honestly, like, yeah. But yeah. fantastic, man. So happy with That's him. And I know I know. yesterday he didn't score or assist, but he was in that game the whole way through. And um, yeah, he's a brilliant player. I'm really happy with him. It's really interesting you say that as well, Patrick, because obviously yesterday there was a chance where I think he, he broke with the ball. He managed to get past one and it bobbled a bit. He'll go for the next. You think yeah. like, he's going to shoot in a minute. Um, but yeah, it's just a, another nice outlet, isn't it, as well, Ross? The fact that we've kind of got this player now that we can kind of call upon if the likes of Sonny and Kane need it. I know we've spoken about Sonny didn't necessarily need that break yesterday because he went and proved everyone wrong. But it, it can show that we don't have to worry because we've got that other option. Yeah, because give me, give me, give me a ginger hey. from Sweden. <laughs> from Juventus and he plays on the wing. Oh, I love that guy, man. Love him. I remember there was one movie made. I think it was Son's goal that he shot wide where he kind of went and he pinged it back and then turned quick. Mm-hmm. With that, he like volleyed it ahead for himself. I was like, "Oh my god!" I mean, that kid is just oozes talent. I mean, mm-hmm. he's he's so good, so special, and and he's you know, and the commentators and people that were talking after the game like Tottenham's got this front three now with Kulusevski, yeah. Son, and Kane, mm-hmm. yeah. and they never used to say anything like that. And you know, they're they're mm-hmm. talking about it now. Everybody's seeing it now, and he's just been fantastic. Mm-hmm. It really has been. And, and I, I know we spoke about this a lot as well, Max, but he just needs to keep it up. And it shows that he is doing that, isn't it? Well, that's it. I've, and this is like, I think Pat just picked up on it just then. But that's the, also a reason why Son's shining again, how we know he can. Because it's not, all the pressure's not on, like Pat, but just for you here, I was saying like, Kane will always look up and he's like, oh, where's Son? Where's Son? Yeah. But at least now Son can do, he can run in behind and like, Kulu can make another run. It's like, yeah. Yeah. they haven't just got all... It's not just the Kane Son show now. Like we've actually got another another winner that's completely opposite to Son in all of his, his attributes, mm-hmm. and he can he's good on the ball. He's got good technical like ability. His awareness is good. Like you said, he's not going to beat many people. He, he might beat the odd one or two here and there, but we've we've seen he's he's got a bit of skill. He's got a bit of I'd say he's got a bit of everything. But if you were to put yeah. like you know on FIFA where they have all the bars, there's mm-hmm. like he's probably like medium on everything. Mm-hmm. He's not got anything that's like reaching the sky like but. It's just nice to have a front three. Like, and we haven't had a front three to talk about in a long time, but he's got the assist so far. He's got a couple of goals and he's only played like six games. So yeah. we got what, 10 games left? I mean, I hold can't the wait top to... four, four. I, uh... Hold the top four. <laughs> I'm always we'll get talking to about it. that. 
um but no it's like you said it is it's another interesting uh coin to flip in the works if that makes sense it, it gives us another player to be like right you can both do your business now while these two guys kind of do theirs like it, it's just another nice uh relaxing feeling but obviously we've spoken about the attacking front i want to talk about the defensive uh defending attributes i can't get my words out too excited um <laughs> obviously their main man antonio always always does it against us but yesterday patrick uh romero shut him right down didn't he yeah he did and romero again brilliant player and if you noticed um they picked up on it on the sky sports analysis today like he's creeping forward a lot more now as well so he's actually giving the team something to think about going forward he's really good on the ball he's again he's like ben tanker in a sense of he's really calm on the ball He's composed. You know, like when Sanchez, okay, if we take it back, when Davison Sanchez has the ball. I feel you know, like he's just... Yeah, you're like, like you don't know what you're going to get and you're already panicked and I that said brings this that. Exact same thing, it, 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 makes, it. it makes Lloris it. panic. It makes Dyer panic. It makes our front three or the midfield three panic. When Romero gets the ball, you can push forward because you know we're not going to lose it. And it just gives you that... You're just more relaxed. You know that, you know, we're going to keep possession of the ball. We're going to move it around. But the guy's a beast. He gave Antonio no change yesterday. Um, Antonio always gives us problems. But with Romero on his ass, the guy was struggling. And he had uh, probably the worst game we've seen him have against us because Romero marked him out of the game. Um, he's such a good defender, man. He reads the game so well. Even when he made a mistake and lost it, he got back in position straight away. Um, yeah, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. And, and you know, obviously the lock down the road are talking about Ben White and um, Gabriel. Romero's way better than both of them. Mm -hmm. He's so good. And, um, you know, long may it continue. I do feel he needs to cut down on the silly yellow cards because he's already at a position now. If he gets two more, he misses two games. So we really need him to chill on that. But as you saw yesterday, there was no rash tackles, no yellow cards. So I think probably Conte's had a word, just chill out a bit. There's no need to clean someone out every game. You can, you know, just relax. But yeah, like forward passes, progressive passes. He's still, he's got that Toby ping in him as well. But for me, I feel, I know it's early days, but he could be probably one of our best defenders that we've seen for a long, long time. He's he's really got it all. Uh, I'm glad you said that because obviously I was going to come to you, Ross, for this one. Um, yeah. There's lots of rival fans saying that we shouldn't big him up too much because of the crap we've had, obviously, Sanchez and, and, and Dyer in, in late times, obviously not mm. quite recently. Would you say it's too soon, maybe, to say that he's going to be one of the best defenders for us? Is it purely because we've had crap to put up with? Or do you think he is generally the real deal? Not, not at all. I think the guy's the real deal. I mean, he's mm -hmm. shown it. What showed me was when he was out for three months and he came back that first game and just bossed the defense. Like, mm -hmm. he just stepped right in. It's like, okay, uh, this is mine now. And he's just so smooth. He's so calm. He just makes those tackles, makes those right moves, makes the right decisions. He gets a little aggressive at times, but I think sometimes that's kind of your trade off there. I mean, he'll get better with it, I think, but I mean, he's just, he's just so good. He's so smooth. He's so natural. That's what I like about him. And, you know, yeah. And, and you know, we haven't, you know, we've had some troubles back there, but he and Dyer, I mean, and, and Dyer, I mean, how many of us had him out the door several months ago? You know, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, you know they perform they form this partnership you know yeah. and they just completely yeah. lock that defense down how is Dyer not in the latest england squad by the way how has he I been know. snubbed like he deserves to be in yeah. there like even honestly. me as an american i'm like what the hell's going yeah. on he should be in there man. He should be, really. mm. hey, and, and i like the fact that you said obviously that his aggression is is something that he does need to tone down because it does give him yellow cards here there and everywhere mm. but max do you think that's just his kind of nationality and that kind of sense because we saw it with Lamela. We we've seen it with the mm. Celso. They Those have Argentine that, boys. Mm. They have that aggression within them. So do you think that's just something that he needs to try and control? But then I also <laughs> think to myself as well that we sometimes need that because we seem too laxed on the ball. Yeah. Well no, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. But when you're two nil up or three nil up it not very often three nil up, but if you're winning, you don't need to be putting in stupid tackles where you could be risking getting sent off because but that's that's come from that's that's just how he's obviously been raised is the Argentines love it, don't they? They get stuck in, they don't really give a shit. They they literally they're there to wind people up and this is why people love Lamella. Like they don't necessarily like him for their their ability all the time. They just like the the shit housery, so shit to speak. Housery. Shit housing boys. Uh, yep. if, if you can tread on someone's toe or just wind them up, then 
you naturally you put them off their game. They're not the same player. Like they, they, you get under their skin, and he's so good at doing that. Um, to keep someone like Antonio out of the game, I think Antonio had that one snapshot that literally was close to going in the corner. Yeah. After that, right. after that, literally kept him quiet. He done absolutely nothing. Um, and like you're saying, Pat, he's just when he's on the ball, he's calm, collected. Yeah. If we can find, I'm not saying I'm not trying to push Dyer out or anything because Dyer's obviously been brilliant as well. Like they're learning together, they've, they haven't played that many games together. But God, those two are so much better than what we've seen. It's just yeah. you feel so much more comfortable if you start from the back. That because the end of the day, if you can not not concede goals, you lower how many you actually have to score to win the game. It's yeah. like yeah. it's simple as that. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, Romero, he's just a he's a beast. And do you know what? I've, 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 when you see him in defence, you, you naturally feel more confident going into the game anyway. A hundred percent. And I, I think, I know we spoke about consistency tonight, but having that same team out again kind of proves the point that, OK, now we're actually yelling together and now we're picking up points from it. Um, I also want to talk about the scuffle as well. I, to be honest, I feel I was too busy shouting crap that I didn't actually see what was going on. Um, all I saw was Sonny fall to the floor and, and a bit of an argy-bargy in, in the corner, uh, in the uh, penalty box. Um, so, Patrick... I'm actually really pleased that we managed to keep our heads and actually mm-hmm. still get the game on the Because a few, say, not even at the start of the season, we probably would have bottled that, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. The high energy and things. Yeah, I mean, um, when the Son, you know, obviously, um, what is it, Zuma kicked the ball at Son, Son overreacted and fell over. And to be fair, I didn't see it in real time. And I saw after, I was like, okay, fair enough. But players do it, unfortunately. It's a dark heart of the game. We saw Kieran Turney when they were, I can't remember who they played last week or whichever, and then someone gave him the ball to hurry up and get the throw in. And he rolled over like he'd been shot. Players do it. It's just a dark heart of the game. Um, I prefer Sonny not to do it, but it is what it is, isn't it? And, um, you know, I saw Regalon come for, forward and then push someone kind of like near the neck facial area. And I was like, oh, man, if they look at this, mm. we could be in trouble. And it was just like you said, Holly, at that fine like point of the game where it could have went either way. It was on a knife edge. Even though I felt we had control, if we get a man sent off then... Who knows if we capitulate or not? Yeah. But um, you know, for, to be fair, I felt we were comfortable throughout that whole game. If I'm being honest, and um, yeah, it was two one for a while, but I I thought we was comfortable. And if Kane had a shooting boots on, we would have probably won that four or five nil. To be fair, Kane had two chances that on a normal day he tucks away and no one even mentions them again. But yeah, we were comfortable in and out of possession, and that's what I like to see for a long time. We've always been okay on the ball, but we looked a lot better on the ball. But out of possession, we kind of had West Ham exactly where we wanted them to to be. And that looks good as well. So defensively, you know, Ben Davis gets a lot of credit for me as well. I'm not his biggest fan, but he did a real good job on that left side, um, controlling the ball, nipping in when he could, uh, nicking balls as well. So, yeah, defensively, good solid unit. And um, we do need to be better on corners, though, because, I mean... We gave them nothing. We we blocked every shot. They had no shots on target, but we went to sleep on the corner and boom, they score. So we really mm. need to... I feel that we are lacking defensively on corners. We've been you know caught a few times there. But other than that, I, I thought we had a great game defensively. It's actually really interesting you brought out the corner because I totally forgot about it, to be fair. But it, it was a Ben Rama, obviously, goal, uh, boss. Yeah. And he just seemed to be alone at the back. I don't really know where or who was supposed to be. I don't know whether it was Son when I rewatched the replay, whether he should have tracked his run. But it was just miffed me that he was left on his own when we know how good West Ham was, uh, are at set pieces. Sorry. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's, it's again, this has happened before. Someone coming from down at the top of the box. Happened against Liverpool when we were at Anfield last year. Firmino, God, I hate that guy, coming down from the top of the box, heading it in the cup final, Carabao Cup final, someone coming down from the top of the box, smashing it in. We've just had problems with that. But I think it was a little bit of unlucky, too, because that ball just happened to come off right where he was. Mm-hmm. But Sonny should have seen that. Sonny should have marked it. But, you know, I, I just I think I was in doing the Reddit uh, game thread, and I'm like, oh, another set piece goal. Here we go. Oh, mm-hmm. no, it just seems to be the, a- the given. Go on, Max. It was actually a really good finish, to be fair, because it it it's like un- it's under his feet. Yeah, it's like managed to it, like if he'd done that again, either Larice is saving it or he's putting it wide or he's he's just putting it politely. He's, he's not scoring basically, so he's done well yeah. to put that to put that in the back of the net. And then like we we'll just let him back in it. It's just that yeah. I'm so glad that 
that goal didn't let our heads go down because even when yeah. we scored, we were like, "Nah, like we, we're back on this." We just we just couldn't find that third goal. Like Pat says, he we, we Kane scores that little the little dink over the keeper. Yeah. Like that's actually probably one. I'm actually disappointed he didn't score that because that's actually an easy chance. He, he even could have squared it to Son. Would what what a pass from Hoiberg, by the way. You notice a difference because yeah. Bentancur actually gives Hoiberg that. Because sorry, Hoiberg doesn't have to babysit Winks now. So Hoiberg can actually push forward and you see that creative. Because when Hoiberg plays for Denmark, you see he does have that pass in his locker. And we've seen it now and again, but you're Mm -hmm. starting to see it now again. And that pass to Kane was delicious. And nine times out of ten, Kane finishes that. I'm so surprised he missed it. But in the end, it didn't matter, thankfully. But yeah, great, great play from Hoiberg Mm -hmm. to find him there. I just want to bring this up from Anthony. Thank you again, uh, thank you again, Anthony, for the for the super chat. He says that Romero is a great signing. His only weakness is discipline, what we've kind of already spoken yeah. about. Um, and obviously Dyer, we all know that Dyer's gelling well with him, but I think we do need an upgrade, and I think we can all kind of merit that. I mean, he's really come on from where he was, but imagine if we could get someone in that's better than Dyer, we can drop Dyer down to the sub bench. I don't you know. You know how. what? What what about? Putting it other way, what about keeping Dyer but getting a better left side to centre back? So if you get an upgrade on Ben Davis, because then I I like Ben Davis, so I think he's a decent backup left side to centre back. He's not a centre back. Yeah, he's not a centre back. <clears throat> he's actually a winger, uh, a left back by trade. So if we could actually get a better ball playing left footed centre back, I don't think Dyer is the problem. I actually think Dyer is a decent centre back. If I'm being real. When's the last time he touched wood? I don't want to jinx it. But when's the last time Dyer made a mistake or actually? You know, you were worried when he was on the ball. I think he's a lot better than people are actually. The perception of him is still from like last year, two years ago. But I do think if we upgraded on the Ben Davis area, we would look so much more fluid because Ben Davis isn't great on the ball. He's always a bit scared to receive the ball and pass forward. But if we had a better left sided ball play in centre back, we would, I think we'd fly. Hmm. Well, in uh, a back three, in a back three, Dyer's just so much more confident. And yeah. you, can, you can tell. So, like you said, if we. If we got someone, I don't know who, obviously, that would be on to Conte. That's, yeah, but that's it, the scouting. It'll be big because you find a good left-sided centre-back to go with him, then, like you said, I'm more than happy to keep Dyer. Like like we're saying he should be in the England team. So you, you yeah. wouldn't be saying that if he wasn't playing well. Exactly. So it, why not? He's, he can ping a ball. He can put a tackle in. Yeah, he's not he's not quick by any sense of imagination. But then that's why you, you put him in the centre. And then you've yeah. got the others coming because Romero's not slow, is he? He's mm. not slow. He, he he was keeping up with Antonio, and like we've we've seen already, that he can he can obviously he can compete with the best. So yeah, no, I'm more than happy as well. Just touching on that for so if we keep Dyer, if we had to, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If we can have, by all means are great, but I don't think he's our biggest problem. And if we do have a limited budget, like we typically tend to do, I would prefer to focus on the left side side first, mm. and then see how we do. Um, I just want to bring this up from Chris. I'll come to you, Ross. Um. Reguilon did play all right uh, yesterday, but he was so frustrating oh, in the final yeah. third. So it's just, I think there was one chance. He's he's managed to slip into the box. He's pretty much one-on-one. He's just got a guy to his shoulder and he gets the slightest of touches and just goes down. You're thinking to yourself, just stay on your feet and have a shot. Do not think, Ross, is that the game he really needs to pick himself up for to get better at? Oh, yeah, definitely has to work on his finishing for sure. I mean, you know, he's gotten in. How many times has he gotten in there? Gotten in, great position and just... Can't mm-hmm. finish it. Can't get it in the net. And yeah, I go. And he went down like he got hit by a sniper. It's like, come on, dudes. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, and yeah, but he yeah, he definitely needs to work on that because otherwise, he's great. He's got great pace. He's good at getting the ball up the flank there. Good at getting in those positions. But you know, we need that finishing. I know he's got what he's got a couple goals. I think. Yeah. One or two. But but yeah. he could have so much more. So if if you know if he can work on that and get a little better with that and you know, finish every couple of those, we'd be so much better off. That's the thing. It's actually gone. Sorry, Matt's gone. No, it's no, not. the go. last two. The last two games, Kane's put him in four times. Believe it or not, I know. I, know. I, saw, yeah. I saw that on Twitter earlier. I was like, for it, I was like, wow. You at least one of those you've got to be putting away because, yeah. as bad as it sounds, Kane's going to see that and he's not going to play him in yeah. because he's mm-hmm. like, well, you're not going to score. Mm-hmm. And if you can get someone on that wing that can can do that, and I'm. I'm not saying we're ever going to get someone as good as when Gareth Bale knocked it past Mykon and bloody smashed it. <laughs> but, but if you can get a left wing, a left sided like winger to do that, oh my, like think of Kane's passing with with people like Kulu Son, a left wing back, like the options of picking out, it, it, it would be unbelievable. It'd be, we'd, we'd score so many goals. 
Mm. I, I, that's the thing. It really it's a bit like Emerson Royale. Like they get in amazing positions, they just don't have the end product yeah. to, to deliver, mm. and it's it's so frustrating. I mean, like Darren says here, we forget about Cess, but I think Cess, although he scored a lot of Fulham, I, I still don't think he's necessarily going to do it for us. Still, I, I just sadly don't think he's going to be the one that cuts it. I don't know what you think, Patrick. Do you think Cess could could be the answer, maybe, or again, is it another roll of the dice? I'm torn with Cess because I do see a player in there, but he looks to me like he plays within himself. He looks like he lacks the confidence and the belief that he needs to really push on. Like every top player has to believe that they're the, you know, the the, the shit. Excuse my French. Like you know, your sons, your Canes, even your Ben Tankers, whoever. They like, they believe that they will nine times out of ten pull off what they're trying. They believe it and they know it and they and they do it. And with Cess, you'll see him get into a great position or you'll see him beat a man and they check back or it's like he's playing within himself because he's got, like Conte said, he's got the speed, he's got the skill, he's got the strength. He's quite good defensively. He's better for me defensively than Reggie is. But there's just something missing. I don't know what it is. So, I don't know, man. I, I feel, you know, how much time do you give him? The only problem with Cess as well is that anytime he's getting into a good rhythm, four or five games, he gets a niggle, he gets a knock and he's out again. And it's like you start again and it's the same old cycle. And yeah, maybe it's time to cut our losses. A good young player, but I don't know if he's going to make it in a Spurs shirt. Like you said, Hull, sometimes it's just, mm. just for whatever reason, it just doesn't work out at a certain club. I don't know. Yeah, it is, like you say, it's annoying. Like it's you're trying nice. to get into that consistency yeah. and then again, he gets injured. It's just... Exactly, it's nuts. It's a never-ending cycle, isn't it, really? And I do feel sorry for him because when he obviously he made that, that cock-up, basically, in the um, Conference League, and then he came back and he, he proved his worth again after he made yeah. that cock-up, it shows that there is someone in there, he just not, he's not believing in himself. And I don't know whether mm. that that cock-up he made um, damaged him a bit, a little bit with his confidence, but I don't know. I really don't know about Cess. But it's a good point, Darren. Um, I just want to talk now about, obviously, the dreaded top four. Max, I know this is your specialised subject. So I will come to you first. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's now your time to shine, mate. Um, but I had Luke on a, a couple of weeks ago and he was saying top four still on. He was adamant. Um, not going to lie to you, I was a bit more less optimistic because I know it's the hope that crushes you. Um, but Max, I come to you. Now with this result under our belts <laughs> against West Ham, I know it's doable, but can we actually get over the line, do you think? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, there's no point in me sitting here and saying why why we can't. We've got bloody Conte. We've got Kane who's in form. We've got Son who's flying. We've got Kulu who's actually finding form now as well. And he's hardly even been to the club. We've got Benton Kerr who's keeping everyone like when you see him on the team sheet you're happy you're excited you've got we spoke about we've got Romero we've got Dyer who are actually playing well and actually creating a good partnership we've got we're actually making a lot more chances now and um, we're playing like the team kind of know Conte's not here for very long we need to perform and this is how I'm seeing it as well it's like this is the last roll of the dice we've actually got the best we've got a better games over Arsenal we've got that game in hand over them honestly when that game comes that I thought this game was big for West Ham and honestly you could argue they rolled over for us because we, we you thought we were in control of that game that game is honestly the, one of the biggest games I'm probably ever going to see at, at that stadium um, it, and it's a reason why Sky if you've noticed keep putting it back they're not yep. putting it on telly yep. they're waiting they're waiting for that because it comes down to everything's money these days isn't it and it comes down to it. that game could honestly be, it could be the decider or yeah. going into the top four. It, they won't put it last game of the season because obviously I don't think they legally can with the Sunday three o'clock, whatever they do. But Ooh, yeah, it, it would looks not, like it will be it the game surprise. before last. Yeah, it will literally be a fourth place playoff. Whoever gets it, and I, I believe it will probably, like you said, Matt. I think it will come down to that. I think, yeah. I think we we can get top four, and I'm going to put it out. There, I think we will get top four. I don't see why we can't. At the end of the day, you can be fantastic for the whole season. Like Arsenal, they've been great. They've gone on a great run. But it's business end of the season. This is where you need to perform. And thankfully, mm -hmm. we've started to cook and simmer just at the right time. Won four out of the last five. If you notice, we're scoring in bunches again. Four past Leeds, five past Everton. We scored two away at Old Trafford. You scored two away at Old Trafford. I don't know how you don't get a result. But even in that game, we didn't play bad. Then we beat Brighton 2-0. Mm -hmm. Beat West Ham, scored three. There's signs of something cooking there. So as long as we can keep the momentum... Um, Arsenal yeah. has still got the harder running on paper. They've still got to play us, Chelsea, 
Man United, and I think they got to play. No, is it Liverpool? But they got to play like four or five big. No, and they got to play West Ham. Sorry. So there's a lot of top four six pointers in there. We have the easier running on paper. I know that's you know by the by, but I don't see why we can't get it. I really don't. Arsenal's game in hand is against Chelsea, by the way. So that's no gimme. That is definitely not. <laughs> you know, Chelsea will need the points as well because they're not mathematically safe. So um, and Chelsea will never want to get beaten by Arsenal either. So. We're in a good position. We just need to get the points and then obviously the rest will take care of itself. That's the thing that just worries me, though, the fact that we need to take control. And when we get the opportunity to take control, I it know, will capitulate. Um, but, Ross, I'll come to you. Obviously, I think there's a stat that Arsenal have been, if they do manage to get top four, they're the only club that has managed to beat all the teams out of the top six that haven't been in the top six or something ridiculous like that, some weird stat. So that being said, Ross, I want to get your thoughts. Do you think we can get top four after what these guys have said and your own thoughts? What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think it's possible. As they've said, we got an easier fixture list. I mean, I look at all the games. Liverpool away is the only one that I say. Mm, yeah, yeah. That could be really that could be really tough. But all the other ones, I mean, are, are teams that, that really won't be playing for anything, a lot of them, mm -hmm. and teams that we should be able to beat, especially if we continue the form we're continuing now. Mm -hmm. Continue the form we're continuing now. Try not to have too many slip ups. Take as many points as we can. Get the goal differential up. We'll definitely want to do that yeah. because that you know, for the tiebreakers there. But no, I definitely think it's possible. I think we can do it. We can continue on this way, and there's a, seems to be a belief now with the guys. So it, I think we can do it absolutely. I love the options. And also, oh sorry, go on. Go on. no, no, go for it. Go on. <laughs> like, you also, you say against Liverpool, it's annoying because we actually always play good against Liverpool. They just always yeah. find a way. At the end, it, yeah, no, yeah. they always yeah. find a way. We've had. How many times in the last couple of years where we've had that chance? We've had the Sissoko, we've had Bergwijn, we've had Kane penalties, we've had, the head, the we've had so down, many yeah. stupid like times where we, we we go to Anfield and we, we should be getting... There was even time, I think, I actually went this, I remember where Son, it would have made it 2-0 when he, he hit the crossbar when he took it around the keeper. And then we ended up losing that one, 2-1. Um, it, it's always Liverpool. Um, and this, this would be the season that we actually... Even if we went there and obviously got a draw, it's better than if yeah, you go there. As long as you get, as well. as long as you get, get points, result, yeah, yeah. Mm. fantastic. Points mean prizes, as we all like to say. But it, <laughs> it's it's weird for the one the, the one year I'm not feeling optimistic because I've had enough. Because every year I do it to myself and they crush me. You guys are feeling <laughs> optimistic, so you know you, you might have swayed me tonight. So um, <laughs> hopefully we we do manage to to get it done. Um, now. Before we go, I just want to touch on, obviously, this new news that's coming out at the moment, and that is uh, good old Dybala. Uh, oh, the fact man. that we could be having another potential <laughs> summer, which will be, he's coming, he's not coming, he's coming, he's not coming. So, Patrick, come to you first. I think I've got a Dybala shirt around here somewhere. Oh, have you? <laughs> yes. Yeah, let me find it. Let me find it. Nice. So, while uh, uh, Max tries and finds that Dybala shirt, what are you kind of what are you kind of thoughts on it? Obviously, he's looking to leave on a free because he's not happy with the, the mm. going on. <laughs> Could uh, Don Fabio be the man that tempts him to Spurs, or do you think with this budget that obviously we know Levy has, it's, it's never going to happen? I don't know, man. I it's such a tough one because who knows what his actual thoughts are? Because he was allegedly close to signing before. Literally, it was done and dusted, but we couldn't get the image rights right or correct. I, I honestly don't know. The thing is. We probably now have the best chance that we've ever had to sign him. Hence, I mean, we've got Conte, we've got Paratici. There's actually Juventus players here as well that he can talk to and 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 find out what's going on with the club and all of that. But then at the same time, do we really? I don't know. Am I am I that sold on Dybala? I don't know how much he's going to cost and what wage. It, well, he sorry, he will be a free, of course. But how much <laughs> the wage? Uh, <laughs> yeah, there yeah, it you is. Go, nice. Part. I've I'm always sure. been a fan. Always <laughs> been a fan. Probably, probably the better question for you guys is: Are you sold on Dybala? Would you not want him at Tottenham, or would you rather go for someone else? I don't know if I'm that sold on him. If I'm being fair, I don't know. Well, Max is the T-shirt. Max, you want yeah. to fire away? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, if it if it means anything, I've done a series on FIFA about six years ago, and that's why I bought this shirt. <laughs> 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 but um. Uh, I'm not one of these that it's too easy to get carried away with compilations when you see people putting mm. them in and 30 yards and skills and dribbles. But he's he's not someone that lacks quality. He's got bags of ability. He's got pace. I, I don't know how old he is anymore. I think he's 
not that it matters, obviously. Must be hitting thirties now. Must be hitting. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But but we still it's still doing it's still doing a season or two in the prem. It's just where you'd play him because he's not going to be on the wing. He's not going to be beating players. It's just it's an exciting name, isn't it? It's an exciting yeah. name who you know someone that's won trophies. Oh, sorry, only twenty eight. Apologies, twenty eight, twenty nine well, in November. As, so he's really as we young. know that young. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, young, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, is it a, a bit like I'm confused? Says I'm, I'm confused by the name, mate. Um, but Ross, <laughs> with Kulisevsky, and if we we do manage to keep him, because Kulisevsky's on alone, isn't it? If I get that right, I, I get confused mm. with the figures and stuff. Um, do we really need a Dybala if? Because Veski can keep that up. Rem- remembering that, obviously, I know he'd be coming on a free. We still have to page his wage packet and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I, I think, I mean, if you get a good deal on him, I mean, it, it's never, uh, squad depth has always been a problem for us. Mm-hmm. So to have a guy in the backup and, hey, you know, those weren't those the two rumors, Bale and Dybala? Well, Bale's mm-hmm. already come back. We, that one's done. So the only one left is Dybala. So, you know, why don't we just clear them both out? <laughs> That is true. Stop me having a headache so, uh, every summer. To be but honest. yeah, um, yeah, no, I think it's fine. I mean, if, if they can get him for a good deal and he wants to come here, why not? Why not? I mean, it is, it is interesting. I mean, you wouldn't say no to the name. It's again, will he cut it in the Premier League? That is Patrick. Like we've said this. It's also signing on fees are just. Yeah. We we don't really we we don't see the behind the scenes of a lot of deals, but no deal these days is a free transfer oh. by any means. But it's just it, that's not how it works. It's. Uh, sign on fees for agents and that you end up paying I think you're probably right in saying you end up paying what, what they actually are worth just in just in wages and transfer fees in, to the agents so yeah we'll see it's a, it's a big summer but we, let's get there first we got this yeah. season to finish we got this season to finish that is very true um, I just want to obviously finish this off Anthony once again what a geezer he's come in with another super chat and he's come in with an unpopular opinion, opinion. I enjoyed yesterday's win but it was a tired West Ham we can't count on our count on our opponents being so poor. We can do it, but must improve. I think, in that kind of sense, Ross, I come to you first. I think it would be unfair to us to say that obviously West Ham were probably a bit tired. But hey, we've played in competitions before and had to play so many fixtures in the week. Yeah. I don't think there's any excuse to be honest. No, I mean you only can play who's in front of you. That that's mm-hmm. what it is. And, you know, that, that's it. That's who we had next on the fixture list. And, you know, how many times have we lost games to teams like that that were playing on short rest or that we should have beaten and we didn't. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's all about getting the job done. Get the three points. That's all that matters. Doesn't matter mm-hmm. how you do it, who you play, get the three. 100%. Mm-hmm. And I, I kind of see what Anthony's saying in the sense that we do need to improve yeah. because I think a lot of us, in maybe Conte as well and that sort of feeling, that, Yes, they will be tired, so let's just go at them straight away. I think that was kind of the thoughts, especially how we started, uh, Max, the fact that we went straight at them straight away. So in that kind of sense, I think we did mm-hmm. OK. I, I don't necessarily think there's much to improve on that West Ham game because, again, they, they would have known that we were up for it because we needed the points. So it wasn't as if they were going to have to use that excuse of being tired. Oh, no. You, and t- a derby, I've said it before, if you know there's a derby coming, it doesn't matter whether you're tired. You're just instantly up for it. You can't tell me, even if you just play Sunday League football and you've got another game on the on the Monday. If I'm playing Sunday League and I've got, and I'm playing Arsenal on the Monday, I'm telling you, I'm giving a 10 out of 10. So, just because you know what you're up against. You can be, you can lose three on the, three or four on the trot and then have your heads down. But as soon as there's a derby, you notice we've, we've played against teams that have been on a losing a losing streak and then automatically oh Tottenham are in town let's turn up like it, it, it happens against us so it's nice to actually be on the, the winning side and breeding a team for once and then we look look on to the next game which I think is Newcastle mm. and I'm glad yeah. you mentioned that as well because obviously with my uh, my brain I forgot about that but Patrick that's true we need to push on against Newcastle to show like Anthony said that we're not using this excuse of the fact that they were tired to go and get the win we will go and play Newcastle and we will go get the win yeah, I, I, I agree. And, um, you know, I'm not buying a whole West Ham were tired and this and that. Yeah, of course, they had a, an extra day's... Oh, so we had an extra day's rest and they, they go to extra time. But at the end of the day, they were 100% up for that game. It meant just as much to them as it did to us. We were literally tied on points. London derby. They've come to our stadium many a time and got a result or tried to get... A, you know, they were up for the game. It's not a team that was just going to roll over for us. And um, they did try and play. But I just believe our quality shone through. And like I said, we were good defensively and offensively. And in the end, it just wore them out. Mm-hmm. But Newcastle will be a different, you know, kettle of fish. I think for us, the good thing is that Newcastle need the points as well. 
Uh, they're not a team that will pretty much, you know, bank in, uh, in, in two in a low block, two blocks of four like a Burnley. Newcastle will try and play. Eddie Howe will try and come out and play. And I think that will play into our hands. But we just got to respect the opposition and get the job done. I believe we will. Um, but yeah, um, it will be a, it will be a different test, but um, it will be a good test for us. And I, I think I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to that game. Newcastle will be up for it as they always are against Tottenham. At the end of the day, we're still we're considered a big team. We're considered a big scalp. So most teams are up for playing us, as you guys know and have seen. So we just need to turn up and, and get the job done. One hundred percent. I just want to finish on this super chat from I'm confused. <laughs> Congrats, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not confused that your channel but your channel is put on on it. It's only as spot on as the guests I get on. So thank you so much to these three that have come on tonight to obviously talk about that win. And I'm confused. Thank you so much for not being confused. So thank you very much. Um but yeah I think that's kind of wrap up that that kind of win and to look forward hopefully to what the summer may bring and the fact that we can keep on say this, that and the other and hopefully we can celebrate getting top four because for once I actually will be happy if we can get top four because of all the trophies that have gone amiss. Um, but I want to say a big thank you to obviously these guys tonight. First of all, Spurs Unite, aka Ross. Thanks again for coming onto the channel and obviously showing the support. If you guys want to become a member and you want to jump on Holy Hot Spurs, if you fancy becoming a club legend, you can become like Ross and come onto the channel. So, Ross, where can everybody find you doing your thing? You can find me there, Spurs Unite, on Twitter. And I uh, just want to send a shout out to the UCF Twitter Mafia. Love you guys. <laughs> Love that, mate. Thanks again for, for tuning in and all the support you give and, and jumping on tonight. Anytime. Thank you. And also, Max, where can everybody find you doing your thing as well? Uh, if anyone actually wants to see this face on YouTube, yep, yeah, Joe Max uh, on Instagram, now on TikTok and on Twitter, yeah. So, uh, and I have to just say, um, what was it, Spursy Night? I, it's so nice to have a different opinion from across the pond, honestly, because I honestly just hear the same stuff in the ground and it's normally obviously same opinions because when you actually speak to someone from a different different country that watches the sport in this country it blows my mind to sometimes see this total different view on things if that makes sense so mm -hmm. yeah it's pleasure it's pleasure to speak with you mate and yeah thanks joe max guys awesome man <laughs> appreciate that really appreciate that no, that is class but yeah thanks again max and obviously patrick where can everybody find you doing your thing these days i mean you're everywhere um, mate <laughs> yeah that's it so i mean the twitter handle's right there so it's at patrick tyrant uh and then i'm also part of the views tv official team but yeah i'm part of the coys.com podcast team i'm on the football terrace obviously i've been on holly's hotspurs quite a few times and i've been invited into so many different podcasts and this and that so yeah it's going well so i'm i'm really touched and humbled by it and um I also like Max. It's it's lovely to see, you know, Ross, me and him have interacted on Twitter for quite a while, but to actually hear him in the flesh and hear the accent, it's real. Like you see he's a, I know he's American, don't get me wrong, but to hear his accent and hear it, it like it, it does blow That's my mind. I mean. I'm from Tottenham, I'm a Tottenham boy. I live 15 minutes from the stadium. Right. So to to understand that we've we've got like American fans that are diehard just like me and they live in another continent and it's crazy it just shows how big the team is and how big the brand is and how how football can connect us all together and we all love Absolutely. the same thing and mm. it's yeah it's great man it's, it's lovely it's lovely so pleasure um yeah ross it's yeah you gotta come down to the stadium man and shout me uh, uh, yeah, my brother you know <laughs> <laughs> there you go you're watching top boy yeah I'm coming. yeah <laughs> you know that boy there, blood. there you go oh, <laughs> <laughs> and that and that's the thing like it, it's so nice to have people interact in the chat but it's also so nice like yesterday i know i, I missed you patrick and i'm sure yeah. we'll be up at the brighton game yeah, but it's definitely. so nice to actually see people in the flesh that you talk to over exactly. the screen like it's mad um so no like i said it, it's lovely to have you three on again and thank you to everyone in the chat i mean there's been so many people i need to thank that have been watching that have donated tonight i mean it <laughs> it blows my mind that you'd want to give me money to help me grow the channel it's mad obviously it's crazy but um i'm gonna stop waffling now because i'm gonna keep going on um but until next time come on you spurs